very good afternoon and welcome to CEC Gurukul lecture. In continuation with the series on Indian sociological tr uh, tradition, today I am going to talk about D.P. Mukherjee and his study of Indian society. In this uh, uh, half of the lecture, I am going to look into some of the major concepts and themes which has been kind of uh, given to us by D.P. Mukherjee and these concepts and themes are very critical in understanding society in India. These concepts kind of give us a very uh, alternative way of understanding society in India, something which was kind of different from what we were learning and listening from the Orientalist discourse. So, when we try to look into uh, D.P. Mukherjee, he is kind of uh, most of the time considered as a Marxist sociologist. So, it is very important before we understand how we make sense of society in India to understand his Marxian perspective and his theory of dialectical materialism. So, he kind of made a uh, attempt to understand Indian society by using Karl Marx dialectical interpretation that is how the tradition and modernity kind of encountered with each other or made sense of each other. So, the uh, uh, coming of uh, uh, tradition and modernity led to a lot of changes, some kind of uh, contradictions, some conflicts, some adjustments, assimilation. And in this con kind of a contestation between tradition and modernity, Indian theory, theorization of Indian society become, became a prominent figure in uh, aspect of almost all western scholars in the 19th century. Most of the Indian scholars, western scholars who were trying to make sense of Indian society gave us this idea that India was moving from a traditional society to a modern society. So, a dichotomy was created between tradition and modernity that India was a traditional society, its exposure to modernity brought to, to exposure to British colonial rule make it came, make it move from a traditional to a modern society. However, most of sociologists in India kind of rejected this dichotomy of the tradition and the modern, modernity and kind of argued that India was moving from a kind of a tradition and there was a continuum, there was no break between it and in, in its own the modernity was not only the result of the co colonial impact on India, but its own way in which it kind of coped and adjusted with the transformations which was taking place. So, his dialectical analysis of Indian history suggested the tradition and modernity, colonialism and nationalism, individualism and collectivism could be seen as direct dialectically interacting with each other in contemporary India. So, that is it. We are not going to kind of create dichotomies between tradition and modernity, colonialism and nationalism, individual and collectivism. These are kind to be looked into a, a forming a con continuum that is there is a gradual flow from one to the other and it is the relation between the two in which we can locate the society in India. So, when we look into his study of Indian society, as he was a graduate of economy and history, his approach was historical. He focused on the historical specificity of Indian culture and social transformation, which was characterized by value assimilating and cultural synthesis that resulted from the encounter between tradition and modernity. So, when we look into the history of India, we see that Indian society has been subject to a large amount of assimilation and acculturation where this kind of people came into India with kind of people the indigenous uh, Indian culture kind of got uh, uh, synthesis happened in terms of the uh, Mughals, the Britishers and many more. So, this synthesis needs to be understood rather than kind of saying that the tradition is something which is past and modernity is something which is the present. So, if some of the main themes in the study of Indian society were the modern Indian culture which is almost a text written by uh, D.P. Mukherjee, nature and method of social sciences, impact of western influence, personality, middle class, tradition and modernity. When we look into these three tradition and modernity, middle class and personality, we will get a overview of what he was his main core th thought or how he kind of visualized Indian society in a new light. So, when we look into the specificity of Indian culture, we know that Indian culture is kind of unique, it is kind of uh, 
uh, not to be compared with the western culture, but it has its own uniqueness, it has its own specificity. So, D. P. Mukherjee stressed on uh, the task of sociologists to explore the specificity and it in by exploring the specificity, one would be able to identify the key feature which kind of would describe the social system. So, according to D. P. Mukherjee in India, these three aspects were less developed in dimension in comparison to the West. Indian culture and society are not individualistic in the Western sense, but they are having group pattern. So, the other uh, kind of a dichotomy which was again very significant in the 19th century social sciences in the West was a dichotomy between individual and group life or collective and much of the argument was telling us that since India is a village life, the collective life is more significant because of transformation, because of the contact with Western influence, Indian society was moving from collective to individualistic. However, when we explore the culture, we explore the lifestyle, the social system of India, we again see a synthesis of individualistic and group pattern. D. P. Mukherjee believed that Indian society and culture do not favor only to have link with the past, but it favors and believes in the process of adaptation. So, Indian society is again one of the specificity of Indian society is its capacity to adapt. So, it is not kind of st sticking back to certain aspect which is kind of labeled as tradition, but it is going to reform and refine those tradition and move ahead. D. P. believed class conflict had smoothened and covered by caste tradition. In the Indian context, when new class relations had not emerged very sharply. So, in the 19th, early 19th century, uh, Indian society as we know was more or less an agrarian society and caste system was uh, the more important uh, dimension of social system. So, as India gets uh, kind of moves towards modernization, comes in contact with the western culture, there is the kind of emergence of the class and he will give us the uh, 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 role of middle class in the formation of Indian society. But however, when we try to understand the social system, we cannot just go by looking into the class conflict. We need to look into the caste class uh, nexus in order to understand the social system. D. P. Mukherjee believed in Indian tradition, namely Shruti, Smriti and Anubha. Of these, the last Anubha or personal experience is revolutionary principle. So, he is going to stress a lot on the individual personality of especially the sociologist and social scientist and it is the experience of individual which becomes very critical in making sense of society. The most important principle of change in Indian society was generalized Anubha or the collective experience of group. So, how do we make sense of society not by looking into the experience of an individual, but looking into a collective experience how most of the people are experiencing the change that was taking place. So, a uh, very good way to understand uh, D. P. Mukherjee's uh, stress and Anubha or personal experience was to understand that when modernization and industrialization started taking place, it was not one individual who was moving from uh, great and rural area groups. Uh, almost a kind of uh, uh, village after village individuals were moving towards uh, city life and that is how there was an increase in migration from rural area to city life. The high traditions were centered in Smriti and Shruti, but they were periodically challenged by the collective experience of group and sects. And for example, in the Bhakti movements, so we know even 19th century India, these large number of movements which were not only kind of uh, critical of the way in which these Vedas and Shrutis uh, and uh, 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 mythological text were interpreted, they were also challenging them. They were kind of bringing about reformation in Hindu religion as such and it is why was the kind of challenging and protesting it because it was kind of uh, an experience, a collective experience which was kind of suggesting that certain parts of these uh, traditions are problematic or are based on ideas of inequality. According to D. P. Mukherjee, the Indian context is not one where discursive religion, buddhi vichar is the dominant force of change, but anubhav and prem that is experience and love 
have been historically superior as agents of change. So, this is where we can kind of look into his understanding of so Indian society as different from the western concept. In the western context, uh, society as it is evident from most of the readings of 19th century, it was a society where uh, uh, the stress was an individualist idea. Whereas, in India the stress is on experience of the entire group. So, experience of the family becomes significant and it is more in terms of interrelation, it is more on the based on we feeling, how we make sense of everybody around us and it is based on that where we try to understand social change and transformation. So, most important concept in Deepi Mukherjee's work is the concept of tradition. He, this concept of tradition appeared for the first time in 1942 when his book Modern Indian Culture a Sociological Study was published. As we have seen when we are looking into his understanding of Indian society, his work look using a lot of uh, words which is uh, kind of uh, not from the western context or not an English term, but is referring to terms which is a part of uh, mythological and uh, text. So, it is very important that he gives a very uh, significant place to the concept of tradition in understanding Indian society. For Deepi Mukherjee, Tradition, uh, the term tradition is taken from the uh, uh, term which means uh, to transmit that is it is kind of implies that you are passing on something, you are passing a value, you are passing a norm from one generation to the other and the Sanskrit equivalent of tradition is either parampara that is succession or ethya which has the same root as itihas or history. So, therefore, he is ki kind of considering tradition and history or tradition as past as synonymous and that is why we kind of is considered as a historical method. So, because he is saying uh, that the understanding of modern society can be uh, uh, arrived at by looking at the itihas or by looking into the parampara or the cultural trend which of Indian society in the past. Traditions are supposed to have a source. It may be scriptures or statements of uh, sages or mythical heroes. Traditions are hence deeply rooted in the past and are kept alive through repeated recalling and retelling of stories and myth. When we look into the Indian society, we know how do we know about what happened in the Vedic age or how do we know what happened in uh, the, uh, the kind of Hindu civilization that we had. It is only through mythology, it is only through a certain kind of uh, rereading and telling storytelling or, or, or in times of kind of uh, uh, large amount of text being written about the mythological heroes and the their deed. And this is how something which was kind of happened in the past is passed down to the present generation. So, there is a continuity, it is not the tradition stops at one particular period, but it flows from the past to the present. Dipi Mukherjee saw tradition as a social and historical process and argued that Indian culture represented certain common traditions that have given rise to a number of general attitude. DP pointed the tradition is susceptible to change and adaptation. So, that is why the whole idea that he was conservative uh, is not correct because he is what he is trying to tell us is that in order to arrive at a holistic understanding of society in India, it is important to go back and look into our culture as it was practiced by the collective in the past and not stop there, look into how the collective behavior underwent change, what influenced the change in the uh, traditional practices and behavior. So, he is going back to the past, but he is not kind of static, his uh, theory is not at a uh, trying to tell us that society is static. He is trying to say that it is society is subject to change and the tradition which is indigenous tradition is also undergoing change. Why? Because there is a kind of a western influence, there is lot of things which is coming from external sources and therefore, it is very important to understand how and why the changes took place. Was Indian society adapting to these changes or were kind of uh, 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 just uh, rejecting the changes that was coming from external sources. So, when we look into the composition of tradition as described by D.P. Mukherjee, 
He says that much of the tradition belongs to ideologies such as Buddhism, Islam, Christianity, tribals and western modernity. So, uh, it would be mistaken to believe that Indian traditions are Hindu only and therefore, this is again a kind of a reply to people who kind of called him as Hindu liberal or uh, I am sorry Hindu conservative intellectual. He is telling us that the Hindu tradition, I am sorry, Indian tradition is not only the Hindu tradition, it is a composition of several tradition which is uh, some which is kind of indigenous, others which are coming from outside. The, com um, the combination of various ethnic groups of the country. So, we have, we, this is something which we know that India is a country which has diverse population of diverse religion, ethnic background. So, it, we cannot kind of at any point arrive at an understanding that the tradition is a Hindu tradition. It is a composition or it is a mixture of uh, norms, values, cultural practices of different groups and different uh, communities. Basically, he classifies Indian tradition into three uh, uh, part, the primary tradition, the secondary and the tertiary. The primary traditions have been primordial and authentic to Indian society. So, these are the original, this which something which uh, was kind of part of Indian society since the uh, historical days. The secondary traditions were given second ranking when the Muslims arrived in the country. So, the uh, synthesis of the uh, Hindus and the Muslim, the syncretism that uh, arised because of the invasion and the coming of in by the Muslim was led to the emergence of a secondary tradition. Now, the tertiary uh, is trying to tell us that when we look into the primary and the secondary, there was a certain kind of similarity, there was not kind of uh, 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 focus was not on difference. But when we look into the tradition, the, the tertiary tradition, which is basically the tradition which emerged with the uh, western Im influence that is coming in of the colonial rule and in touch with the western countries, they, uh, the focus shifts from similarity to differences in perceptions. How they start questioning how uh, there was a kind of a comparison between India and western culture and most of the way in which uh, the theorization was being done, a hierarchy was being created. The tradition is something which is past and therefore, it is kind of uh, inferior, it is not conducive to development and modernity is something which is coming in from the western context is uh, uh, dev, uh, means progress, means development. So, this uh, the idea of differences becomes very significant. When we look into the concept of tradition, it becomes very important to look in how D.P. Mukherjee arrives at a uh, understanding between tradition and modernity. He argued that there is a dialectical relation between India's tradition and modernity. The relation between modernization and traditions came to India during the British period. The encounter of tradition and with modernization created cultural contradictions, adaptation and in some cases situations of conflict. So, cultural con uh, contradiction where we know that when the western um, uh, uh, the in impact was there, a large number of uh, practices which was considered as uh, uh, problematic was kind of questioned. So, we were uh, there were people who were kind of questioning the practice of child marriage. Uh, people who were kind of questioning the way the Indians were treating widows and the widows were not allowed to remarry. So, there were a lot of uh, transformations which talk, took place with the western influence. However, it also led into a conflict and the conflict was in terms of ideological, in terms of a comparison that Indian tradition is inferior to the western. So, rational scientific mind is kind of considered more pro progressive and the tradition was kind of considered as an hindrance to modernization. This was problematic and D.P. Mukherjee would reject such a, a, a relation between tradition and modernity. According to D.P. Mukherjee, the encounter between tradition and modernity therefore ends up in two consequences, conflict and synthesis. So, either the two will kind of come into uh, uh, disagreement uh, or either there will be a process of acculturation.
So, Indian society is the result of interaction between tradition and modernity and this is again something which when we read Professor Yogendra Singh uh, text on uh, uh, tradition and modernity, it will also says that there is a continuity, tradition continues in terms of uh, uh, becoming a part of the modernity and in social sciences the lot of examples would be given in terms of how tradition and modernity coexist. So, we know that even if there is a kind of um, um, uh, highly uh, biotechnology and medical sciences have uh, kind of progressed, yet many a time the doctor when is unable to cure any ailment comes out and says that it is only now left to the almighty. Uh, so, there is a tradition which is works all the time, most of the time even as students as individual we are rational, we are kind of considering ourselves as modern, but we go back to the tradition and we kind of do what is a part of a culture, not because it is kind of a, a hindrance, but because it is something which we have learned from uh, uh, our elders and other members of the society. So, there is a dialectical relation, the two are not different from each other, tradition and modernity are not opposed to each other. There is a continuity, there is a dialectical relations and that dialectic or the continuum is something which needs to be analyzed in order to understand society in India. And the when we look into tradition and modernity, one thing which becomes very important to understand change because modernity is implies change, you know the whole idea of modern society comes with industrial revolution and the idea of science and rationality becoming important part. So, the people uh, the significance of religious element becomes less and everything becomes calculability, everything has to be calculated, every action has to have a uh, rational explanation. So, what are we then talking about? We are kind of saying that society is in a process of change, it is a continuity of tradition to kind of uh, adjust to the social economic context in which uh, society is placed. So, for DP the study of tradition was not created around the past, but also the present. So, while he is saying that there is a continuity between tradition and modernity, he is also giving us a historical analysis by which we kind of look around the past to understand the present. He regarded tradition to be a living tradition maintaining the link with the past while also adapting with the present. So, the tradition is not something which we think is something which happened in some century of years and it is kind of uh, static or it is an end to it. Tradition evolves, tradition kind of change, transformations takes place and that is why he is calling it as a living tradition. The living tradition is a tradition which maintains links with the past by retaining something from it and at the same time incorporate new things. So, we are not just kind of throw the baby with the bath water, this is kind of retain the good qualities in it, but still adapt to the changes that is taking place. He focused on studying both high and low language and cultures, not only Arabic and Sanskrit, but also the local dialect. So, this again is very important that most of the theorization of India by the western scholars was looking into the higher language or language which was part of a larger uh, population. He is kind of gives us a subaltern perspective also. In order to make sense, we need to go down to the bottom, try to make sense of the local dialect, try to make sense of the practices of the people even in the kind of uh, 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 villages and rural areas. He regarded the Indian culture and society not to be individualistic in nature. The desire of a person are rigidly fixed by his socio-cultural group pattern and he rarely deviates from it. So, therefore, from here he will kind of uh, uh, go to the concept of personality. Who we are, what we are is not only an individual achievement, it, it widely depends in the social context in which we uh, are placed, it depends on the uh, environment, it depends on the people with whom we are in touch. So, most of the time in even kind of a socialization, when we look into the process of socialization in India, it is very important to understand that the role that the family plays in terms of nurturing the individual. So, therefore, he will also talk about the concept of personality.
So, he says that tradition was neither kind of uh, something which we need to worship or kind of become very obsessed with it that this is my tradition and I cannot do uh, without it, uh, but at the same time we cannot totally negate it. So, and say that the western tradition is very progressive and the western tradition is uh, better than the Indian tradition. What we uh, advocates is that we need to retain the good qualities of the tradition and allow it to adapt itself to the changes and that is how we kind of uh, in evolve and become more progressive. So, according to DP there are three principles of change in Indian tradition Shruti, Smriti and Anubha and in which Anubha or the personal experience is the revolutionary one. You need to experience society differently and only then you will be able to bring about change. He is regarded to be a pioneer of living tradition theory and he kind of gives us uh, the, the this becomes the uh, foundational concept for uh, the emergence of sociology as a stream in India. So, when we look into the concept of personality, we see that there are two ways to understand individual in social science theory. A narrow concept individual seen as an abstract a holistic approach or through the psycho sociological approach. So, when we look into personality most of the time what comes into our mind is an individual his or her body, his characteristic, his uh, uh, attributes, but that is only a narrow way of looking into it. A broader way it would be to place that individual in his or her environment, look into his family, look into the time in which one is born, look into the influences that one has undergone and that is a psycho psychosociological approach. The synthesis of the double process of individuality and the socialization of uniqueness of individual life creates a perfect unity and is referred as personality. There is a distinction between the ideas of Purusha from the western notion of individual in his definition of personality. So, the entire notion of an individual is not only in terms of his own uh, ideology or her body, but in terms of a complete whole and the relation with the society. He said in his presidential address to the first sociological conference in 1955 that he had come to sociology from economics and history because he was interested in developing his personality through knowledge and that is the role of sociology that it kind of brings about a transformation in the individual who is kind of part of the discipline of sociology. So, the concept of Purusha is the term which is using for personality is not an individual, it is a synthesis of the individual and the collective. In order to say it is a combination of your individual as an actor, your achievements, your education, but then the role of the family, the role of the community becomes very important in estab establishing or in the creation of the person that one is. And then uh, the third concept which is very important is modernization whether it is ge genuine or sp spurious. So, he was kind of very concerned about the notion of modernization or how modernization was kind of impacting Indian society. You know there was a time when everything wanted to be modern. So, there was a modern bread, there was a modern school. So, there was a kind of people were obsessed with the notion of modern. Everything had to be modernized. Even when daughters were being given in marriage to people, it was quite kind of an uh, achievement to show that the daughters are modern, but then this, this, this idea of negating the tradition, the negating this Indian society and uh, was a kind of described as cultural imperialism which DP Mukherjee was critical of and therefore, he was trying to tell us that modernization in India has emerged as its own experience with tradition, with its own interplay of tradition and modern. It is not something which is only happening because of the western influence, it is not a colonial uh, process, it is entirely an Indian process which kind have to be understood. So, tradition is not an obstacle for modernization where one had freedom, but we need to kind of look into the modernization as a process of bringing about transformation in tradition and to make it a, 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 an understanding that tradition is a living tradition and is subject to uh, change. 
for this uh, understanding of dp mukherji on tradition and modernity personality middle class and modernization gives us a holistic understanding of sociology in india with this i come to an end of today's lecture thank you